It's nearly 100 years since Dubliners was published in 1914, eventually, after a very long struggle. And it is perhaps, of Joyce's works, the one that is best known and The Dead, that great short story which concludes Dubliners, is one of the most universally admired short stories ever and certainly the one of Joyce's works that a lot of people feel a personal connection to. It was actually his time in Rome in 1906. He moved to Rome for a while which he really didn't like and fled back to Trieste after some time and he wrote to I think his brother Stanislaus in a letter to say perhaps I have been unkind to Dublin in the stories in Dublin is by not emphasizing the city's gifts of hospitality. So I think he wanted to, to move into a different register with the dead. We get this wonderful description of the food, the conversation at the dinner, the dances and so on. All of these elements are beautiful colored uh, uh, parts to the story. They're still quite hard hitting elements to it about things like social structure and class in Dublin society, uh, about the fact that it's, it's a colonial city as it were. Uh, all of the military references reminding us of the fact that it's an occupied city and so on. So Joyce is still achieving what he wants to do, but he's layering it as well with very beautiful things and things that make the city a, an attractive city. Gabriel Conroy is probably one of the sort of Joyce figures in, in Joyce's texts. Um, he has a, an uncertainty about himself and he um, doesn't feel he fully fits in with how the rest of society is expecting him to behave. Now we see that there's a lot of affection for, for him from his aunts for example, um, but he is anxious about the way other people perceive him. So we have these different encounters through the night. Um, the encounter with Lily showing that he has an anxiety perhaps about his social standings. Then later with Miss Ivers we see his insecurity about ideas of nationalism and being an Irish person. Whether he should be gallivanting off to, the, to Europe for his holidays or whether he should be going west and finding out more about his people as Miss Ivers is suggesting. Joyce ticks all the boxes with a character like Molly Ivers. She represents very neatly all of those various strands to which Joyce in many ways was opposed, even though he agreed with things like the national movement and so on, but he didn't like the fierceness of it all, and he certainly didn't like the possibly violent aspects of it. Uh, and Gabriel is very much the same. This experience that is described in The Dead, where Gabriel Conroy experiences his wife's distance from him in many ways, where he is thinking tenderly of her at a moment that she is remembering a young man from her past, again reflects uh, an experience in, in Nora Barnacle's young life, uh, where a student from the university fell in love with her, uh, Michael Bonkin, and he died of tuberculosis before that, that romance could progress further. And obviously this process of uh, transmuting life into art is very much at work here, where we can see Greta thinking of a similar young man who had loved her and, and died. And this, this memory is evoked by the singing of the, the Lass of Ockram. Joyce again is using the real locations, the cemetery at Uthorard, uh, Nora herself living in Nuns Island in, in, in Galway, and so on. So again, Joyce is mixing the real life uh, stories and real life elements, but he's mixing them with uh, artistically created elements as well. So it's not a simple association that Greta Conroy is Nora Barnacle or Nora Barnacle is Greta Conroy. It's much more complicated than that. At the end of The Dead, we have these moments of um, sort of a surreal quality to them, you know, with the snow tapping on the window, and we, we think to ourselves, well, how does snow tap on the window? And this idea of the snow falling throughout the universe, again, a, an image that doesn't actually make sense in nature. So we've moved from, you know, this uh, scrupulous realism in the rest of the text to this image, which is um, full of a sort of aesthetic beauty, um, where we're moving into a different realm in terms of language. Joyce, whilst he's creating great poetry in those last couple of lines, is handing scholars a great deal of difficulty in trying to unravel exactly what he might have meant. But it is one of the most beautiful, and one of the most lyrical passages. And that movement in it is absolutely wonderful. The Dead is perfect. It's got a perfect structure. Um, and it mixes a, a version of a society with an intensely passionate personal story, which, which grabs you all the way through. 
And you're sort of brought into that from the very beginning, you know, when we gave you and, and uh, Greta arriving, and we get a sense of the relationship between the two of them, and that this evening is going to be about them in some way. And then it broadens out to encompass the broader society to which they belong. And then it, it moves back in again to the couple and finishes the evening with a single voice, which is Gabriel's voice, uh, giving us that wonderful meditation. So it's got a beautiful sort of musical structure to it that, that allows you to, to progress in and out of society, the relationship between the two of them and back to the individual, which, um, which I think makes it sort of a, a perfect thing. And I think that's why so many people are attracted to it.